<laughs> okay, this is a real shot here, not the mirror shot. Okay, Kabbalah, and it's from Bob Larson's book he wrote a long time ago, and um, lots of different weird religions in here. I don't really know this one. Now that I'm reading it, it doesn't sound as crazy. I mean, we know it's wrong, um, but it's just interesting how they can make something that we know is wrong sound interesting. So I read about half of the three pages so far. I'll show you and kind of talk about it as we go through to make sure that, you know, while we're learning about this, we'll keep God in the midst of it so we can learn from a Christian perspective, of course, which there's going to be at the end of every one of these. It always has a Christian uh, take at the end, so it'll be really cool. So Kabbalah. Uh, thanks to stars like Madonna and Roseanne, an old Jewish mystical practice is finding new fans. Understanding this means not just believing in the Creator, but identifying with Him in a way that magnifies and humbles us at the same time. To a sense that each of us can become God might seem the utter most vanity, but not when the very essence of becoming God is to receive with the into, with the intention to share. That was from Mitch Siskind, Siskind from a book called Meet God. So that right there is kind of hilarious how people will say, I only want to become God so I can be nice and help other people or something like that. <laughs> it's really... Well, just because you want to be God is an indication that you are not nice at all. The position isn't open. And Lucifer thought that. And Anyway, overview. Students who want to understand ancient Jewish practice practices usually have to look in historic theological books to find what they're looking for. But in recent years, Kabbalah has been covered in glossy magazines that people can find at the nearest supermarket. Mad About Judaism, that's a, um, a article, okay, was the title of a 1997 article in the magazine Entertainment Weekly. The story said Kabbalah's popularity has been helped by the entertainment industry's fascination with this form of mystical Judaism. Among the celebrities cited in the article were Madonna, Roseanne, Barbara Streisand, and Elizabeth Taylor all of whom have become devotees of Kabbalah. It is now trendy and hip among female entertainers, but when it was first introduced seven centuries ago, Kabbalah was specialized was a specialized practice that was restricted to men who were devoted scholars of the Torah or the Old Testament. How did this ancient practice become so popular today? So it sounds like it's just, in a sense, like Judaism, which is really, really weird. Which we know that some of those books are pretty occultic anyway. But anyways, uh, uncertain beginnings. In the 13th century, a Jewish man named Moses de Leon introduced a book called the Zohar to the Jewish world, which was mainly centered in Europe. De Leon claimed that the book contained mystical writings of the second century. Rabbi Simeon bar Yochi. No one had ever heard this rabbi before, but to many people it looked like Zohar was authentic. It was written in Aramaic and claimed to be a commentary on the Torah. Others weren't so sure. Other words, others weren't so sure, though. So it kind of sounds like it's a plagiarized thing, <laughs> probably, or just, yeah made up. Some scholars maintained that de Leon himself wrote the book and passed it off as the real thing. Debates about Simeon Boriochi, the Zohar, and Kabbalah's origins continue today, but nobody is debating Kabbalah's growing popularity regardless of its origin. So, it already sounds kind of interesting thus far. 1922, the first Kabbalah center opened in Jerusalem, dedicating to spreading, dedicated to spreading the practice of Jewish mysticism throughout the world. The group now supports supports centers in 50 locations worldwide. A man named Philip Esberg was one of the deans at the center in Jerusalem. 
After Berg moved to the United States in 1981, the movement caught on here. Berg has since become a prolific author. His most famous book is entitled Kabbalah for the Layman. This book uh, helped make Kabbalah understandable to non-Jewish lay people and helped spread the practice's popularity. Rabbi Joseph Telushkin is the author of Jewish Literacy, which is a guide to millennia of Jewish traditions and theology. In this book, Telushkin writes that Kabbalah looks into the mystical side of Judaism, mystical, mystical side of Judaism. It delves deeper into the essence of God and is less concerned with laws and more pragmatic issues of Judaism. So, kind of the spiritual side of this thing, like maybe um, um, spiritual experiences with God or something like this rather than the laws and the pragmatic issues of um, Judaism, which is really, really interesting. They only want the, the spiritual part of God. I don't think that's supposed to come apart from his word, but anyway. Historically, Jewish rabbis prescribed caution when exploring the mystical side of the Jewish tradition. In the 17th century, rabbis taught that only married men over 40 who were also scholars of the Torah, Torah and Talmud could study Kabbalah. Kabbalah. Today, such cautions have been thrown, in, thrown to the wind. People who, knew, who know little about Judaism or the Torah have been dabbling in Kabbalah. What they encounter is often watered down and modernized version, a watered down and modernized version of this ancient practice. So, I don't know if anybody's having any experiences or anything like that, so I'm not sure. It just seems so weird. Why this? Why is this such a big deal? I'm not quite catching it yet. Novel Teachings The Old Testament describes God as awesome and holy. The Old Testament figures like Moses hid their eyes from God so they wouldn't be overwhelmed by his overwhelming power. But today, some Kabbalah practice, practice, practitioners have transformed God into a chummy, a chummy, inoffensive force who sounds more like a New Testament, a New Age, excuse me, a New Age guru than the God of all the cosmos. So, kind of like a Hindi type of a thing, maybe. Um, you know, kind of the spirit that is um, all love. It's the all love God, which a lot of people in Christianity believe that. It's just the all love God in the Hindu world, whatever. Give everything for him. I feel his love. Anyway, one book described it this, in this way. At the core of Jewish mysticism is the practice of esoteric disciplines that tap into secret wisdom that can involve, can involve assent to and unit, unitive, unitive experiences with the divine realm. So yeah, that's what it sounds like, really strange. Mysticism is never, is not, I don't know, it's, it doesn't seem to me like it's the right word usually for Christian stuff. I mean, some of the people in the, they're called the mystics in Christian history, a lot of them sound like great prayer people to me, so it's really confusing. It's really curious, honestly. But all this stuff sounds like, you know, trying to secret knowledge sounds like Gnosticism to me. So maybe that's what this is, it's just kind of a, a branch of Gnosticism, which is like special knowledge, uh, maybe. And they didn't fear God because it was like every version of Gnosticism was always the gospel, but didn't have to obey God. So obviously not very good. So one book describes it that way. At the core of Jewish mysticism is the practice of esoteric disciplines that tap into secret wisdom, which is like Gnosticism, special knowledge that can involve um, ascent to Unitive experiences with the divine realm. So yeah, obviously it's a different spirit. Um, Kabbalah.com website describes God as creator, but at times this site's comments make God sound as impersonal as one of the many Hindu deities. So in Hinduism, there's three main um, gods. like They have their own trinity, Vishnu and um, Brahma and something else I forget. Ah, I forgot that main one, the six arms. Um, anyways... And then they got millions of other gods too. So, 
yeah, it makes it sound really strange, like it's just some force or something like Star Wars or whatever. The Creator desires to share His positive energy with us, and this comes to us through manifestations. Wow. Um, this site also talks about the light of the Creator. Interesting there, too. But you know that, that Lucifer is the light bearer, so maybe that has something to do with that as well. So all these strange occulted things seems to be tied up into this all at once. So it probably makes sense why the leaders of the world would want to tap into this thing and have it be like a huge kind of a, you know, piece to the puzzle of uh, the final Antichrist. The light of the Creator. This light comes to us in many forms, such as marveling at the beauty of nature, seeing the innocence of children, Light is just a small glimpse at the Creator's essence, and an unction, an unction, uh, no, excuse me, and union with that essence is what we are searching for. Yeah. So, in the occultic ways of getting into the spirit, they tell you not to judge yourself, but when it comes to getting in touch with the Holy Spirit, we are to judge ourselves and be real. So, interesting. They're like, you know. Wanting to find light of the Creator, and um, all these things that sound nice, which nature, anybody can understand that, or the innocence of a children, anybody can go, oh, I love children, you know. But um, it seems to be tapping into all these, like, the ooey-gooey things, like rainbows and, um, you know, angel stories and heaven stories and things like that, when there's no, when there's no um, reproach of the cross to deal with. So, anyways, just chiming in. With my thoughts here, this site and other contemporary teachers say that the emphasis of Kabbalah should be on putting its pr principles into action rather than worrying about theology. Mm. Interesting. When you hear about Christians today, like Phyllis Tickle, she says, we can win more souls if we stop worrying about doctrine. We said, let's, we, let's not worry about doctrine. But the Bible says that Jesus says, his word is above, he, his, is above his own name. He esteems his own word above his own name, and his name is above the name of every name. He esteems his word so high, and the word in Scripture is used to, to make doctrine. So that which the Bible declares as to be so mighty is held very low because they don't want to deal with the real spirit. They want a non-judgmental spirit that will put them into the spirit realm or something. So let me finish that sentence here. It says, this site and other contemporary teachers say that the emphasis of Kabbalah should be on should be putting should be on putting its principles into action rather than worrying about theology and the nature of God, even though all of nature declares his glory, we know who he is by the things that are made. So that's I mean, it's just taking your eyes off of God. And is often the case with New Age religions. Yeah. The emphasis is on what is in it for us. Wow. Not denying ourselves. It's for us. Like a lot of the fake preachers today. In the case of the Kabbalah, its promoters claim it will bring people peace, joy, fulfillment, without any worries about moral codes like the Ten Commandments. See, no judging yourself. It's totally a, a witchcraft or Satanism, whatever it is. Um, you see the people going into the streets. There's a guy who did a documentary on that, showing people who go in Jesus' name, or people who go, who are practicing witches, and they do the exact same practices, no judgment, just just nonsense like this. So Telushkin says that the essence of Kabbalah can be stated as follows. God reveals himself to mankind through a series of ten commandments. See, Firot, a configuration of forces that the issue from the Ensof, these ten emanations are number one, crown, wisdom, understanding, mercy, power, beauty, victory, splendor, foundation, kingdom. These are his Ten Commandments? I don't know. Ten emanations. Oh, emanations. Okay, excuse me. I said, I said, I said both times, not Ten Commandments. I think I just thought that. So Ten Emanations is totally not commandments. It's just you know, powerful thing, sounding things that, you know, New Agers like that kind of stuff. Anyway, some ideas promoted by contemporary Kabbalah teachers, such as reincarnation, seem 
Wait, some of the ideas promoted in contemporary teachers such as reincarnation seem un-Jewish to devout Jews, but you don't have to be Jewish to be concerned about a technique that claims to offer people mystical insights without any strong connection to any to an established faith tradition. See, they're getting away from it on purpose. Like the Antichrist, it says that he's going to be doing things that their fathers have never done before, and then all of a sudden he reveals himself as the Antichrist when he causes the daily sacrifice and the oblation to cease and puts the abomination of desolation on the on the altar, uh, which is probably big animal blood, pig blood or something like that. We don't know. That's what it was before, but we don't know for sure what it's going to be next time. It may be the same. Who knows? Um, for example, the Kabbalah web website pr promises a no-strings-attached approach to mystical experience. Intellectual understanding is not the ultimate goal. Thinking about the concepts and especially putting them into action is the real world and are what counts. Kabbalah gives us the tools to stay connected to the Creator's light. Ah, sounds so weird. And we accomplish this by drawing out of the light that is already within us, which that's not true. When we're apart from God, our heart is deceitfully wicked, the Bible says. Such comments from Kabbalah promoters indicate that no matter how much they claim they are teaching Jewish traditions that have been around for centuries, many contemporary seekers are getting a little more than New Age spirituality with a few touches of Jewish window dressing, right? Same as all the different false versions of Christianity. They pass it off, you know, Jesus this and all this stuff, and it could end up being Gnosticism, cults, or even occultic stuff, communistic stuff, pragmatistic stuff, humanistic stuff, whatever. But it's still selling God out for ten shekels in a shirt, really. Sources, Chris, Kristen Baldwin and Jessica Shaw, in a book called Mad About Judaism, in Entertainment Weekly, 1997, Rabbi Joseph Telushkin, whatever, access the Kabbalah Learning Center in Los Angeles is one of the most famous centers, due largely to its work with many Hollywood celebrities. There are also centers in other major cities around the world. So, anyways, hope that helps everybody. Anybody want to chime in? Let me know. Talk to you later.